Hello, welcome to this tutorial about making this phone reveal effect in Houdini beginner friendly. So first of all, let's analyze the image. So here I have this image and you can see there are a bunch of particles going on on this effect. So one of the things that we can see is this big blow effect on the phone. So all these particles are following, following this velocity. Then what we can also would see is the particles are sort of like keeping close to the phone as well. So I want to add some force as well to manipulate some of this effect a little bit more. Then in Houdini, I'm going to just start off with a geometry node. In here, we're going to use what we call the pillow smoke, which is a preset you could use. And we will use this for our base velocity for our particles. We will also need to apply our font or the text that we want. So this can be something simple as name. And we want to increase the scale so it's a bit larger. So you can feel free to change this to where you want. So this should roughly uh, match here also on the left side. And this will then uh, be overlapping with my particle. So I will replace the source of my particle where we blow the wind from. So it should be roughly like this. So the sphere will emit a volume through the text. We can scale this up so we have more volume. So you can see it goes like this. But our volume needs to blow more to the right. So we're going to go to this velocity note and apply more velocity. So it will blow or go in the direction of the text as you can see now like here. Further, we will also need to place a collision like the phone. So we'll just make a box for now. And you can see I will just roughly place it where the name is. So something like that. I will also make a group node called phone. And I will also add a null node. So we know that this is our collision, for example. We can simply here add a collision to the smoke simulation. And you can see the smoke will react to it. We want to probably refine the collision detail. So we want to lower our resolution here. So we have finer detail in the collisions here. So it will be closer to the phone. You can also play around with other values and shapes and distortions to make the volume more interesting. So something like this should be fine for the tutorial. Going back to the text, we want to scatter a point. So these will be our particle points that will fly around. So for now, let's keep this a bit low and later on we can increase it. We want to place a pop network, which is for particles. And with the particle pop source node, we can see that we can use our input as uh, points and we want to use all the points from the input. So if you play the animation, we can see all the points. So this will unfortunately spawn every single frame. So we need to set the activation to only do it once. So we're going to say that the frame should be equal to one. So it will only spawn at the first frame. You can also set the lifetime shorter to a few seconds and we can add some variations to this as well. If done correctly, you should see the name dissolve slowly over time now. So further, let's add some forces. So we can immediately start by applying our volume force. So we're going to just use the pop effect by volume and apply our volume simulation. So here we're going to copy the name of this null node. And we want to reference this now back into here, this node. So we want to get a reference or link them. So they automatically will now be blown away by the volume. So we already have our effect almost. Now we can also apply the collision here as well by using a static object. Here we can do the same thing where we link our path to where it actually is. You can also play around with some of the collision shapes. I will change it to a surface collision. And I will just simply now merge our object and our static object. And the effect will look like this now. You can also here change how simulation or collision is handled. By going to the collision tab, we can change how something needs to happen. For example, if you want to delete the points on collision, we can select die. So they will be removed automatically. You can also just use slide, and I'll probably use slide for now. Now we want to add some additional forces to this effect. So maybe we can add, add an additional force by curve. So let's draw a curve here that's roughly around the phone, like this. So this curve can then be input here by using the pop curve force. And we can use this curve here by again uh, using our input data. And we can now see this red box that is now representing that curve force. So we need to adjust this a bit more. So we want to make it a bit smaller. So it's only around the phone. We want to set the orbit skill and velocity skill to zero. And we can also use the ramp here to uh, slow off or fall off the effect. Another thing we can do is add a noising on top of this. This is usually done by a pop wop. So just uh, this note. Then we will use the curly noise, which is very popular. So we can use our current position of the points into the position of the noise. And we can play around with different noises. You can also play around with some of these settings, but I leave it as default. We can use this to drive our velocity and it will look like this. So we probably want to blend in or mix them together with the current velocity and our velocity of the noise. So we have something like that. The effect looks a bit interesting. There is some additional noising, but we don't want to activate this every time. So we're going to say that after 50 frames, we don't need this 
uh, the noise anymore and we can just rely on that volume. And now we can, for example, increase our particle counts to make it better. And of course, doing this needs to mean that we will probably need to cache the file. And I'm going to clamp the range to 120 frames so we don't cache a full simulation. Now, one more important detail that I will add is by using a read time node. So we can here read time the simulation and make it faster at the beginning and slower nearing the end. So we have more of this quick blow effect. I'll also probably here delete the phone geometry as it can sometimes be weird. And this is roughly done my simulation. If I go now to the stage network and import everything, I want to import the particles, as you can see over here. And we want to switch to a karma rendering. And then let's now go back to my object layer. And we want to also probably have a camera. So I'm going to roughly align here my effect the way I want it to be. So let's go back to the name and just click new camera. So we roughly capture that uh, frame. Then we want to apply a remapping for the scale. So I'm going to use the H value and rename it to P scale. And I'm going to set the, some ranges here to clamp and remap. We can also use the lapse instance node, which can be useful for manipulating the scale a bit further. So back to the stage network, we can see that our name is very large. So we're going to go to our camera and we're going to lock the viewport over here. Then we're going to go back and change here the instancing scales and play around with that. So we're going to just fine tune these values until we're happy with some of the scaling. So here you can see some of the finer elements are really nice, can come together nicely. So it's up to you how large the scale value is. You can create some nice results with this. So we can merge these back together and then we have an effect like so. You can also try to look at animating this phone. So let's unlock the viewport. Let's place a transform node. And with this transform, we want to push back our object. And then once we're happy, we're going to alt left click on the object's position and it's going to be locked on time. Then we want to move that object further in time and we want to move it to our text. And again, alt left click to lock that uh, frame. So now we have two keyframes to animate this. We can also do the same with colors. So let's say in the background, it should be darker. So let's make it a dark color and we're going to alt left click. Then once further or closer, we're going to uh, make it brighter and alt left click to make it brighter. So when we go to our camera, it should look like this, where the phone is hidden and suddenly revealed nearing the text. And that's roughly how I built this effect quickly. So this is a quick rundown of some of the things you can do in Redini using some particle systems. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe.